Does the Bible teach that the Earth is flat? Did pre-scientific people really think that the Earth was flat? The Flat Earth Myth and the Bible, this week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. Now this week on Creation Magazine Live, our topic is the flat earth myth and the Bible. That's right. Yep. Uh, recently there's been an increase in the number of people seriously considering whether the earth's a sphere. Yep. Uh, which is why we chose the topic for today's show. And we're going to give a number of evidences that it is actually round. <laughs> yes. We'll also debunk the Bible skeptics who misuse various Bible passages to suggest that the Bible says that the earth is flat mm -hmm. and that, uh, that that's what the church used to teach. That they, they say that that's what the church used to teach. Right. Now, let's, but we'll start there and we'll get to some of the evidences for a round earth in a, in a little while. Right. For the last 200 years or so, anti-Christians have resorted to fabricating the myth that the early and medieval ch Christian church taught that the earth was flat. Right. With the release of his 1991 book, Inventing the Flat Earth, historian, his, uh, historian Jeffrey Burton Russell thoroughly demolished the, the flat earth myth. Right. Uh, the famous evolutionist Stephen Jay Gould, who, who died back in 2002, favorably reviewed this masterpiece. Mm -hmm. He wrote this. There never was a period of flat earth darkness among scholars, regardless of how the public at large may have conceptualized our planet both then and now. Greek knowledge of the sphericity never faded, and all major medieval scholars accepted the earth's roundness as an established fact of cosmology. Right. Russell showed that flat earth belief was extremely rare in the church. The flat earths, uh, two main proponents were obscure figures, and they, and they were hugely outweighed by tens of thousands of Christian theologians, poets, artists, scientists, and rulers who unambiguously affirmed that the earth was round. Right. Uh, Russell documents um, accounts supporting the earth's sphericity, sphericity the, the, the roundness, sphericity is, is what it's called, uh, from numerous medieval church scholars, such as a friar Roger Bacon from 1220 to 1292, he, he, the inventor of the spectacles. Mm. Uh, another one, leading medieval scientists such as John Buridan, he lived from 1301 to 1358, and Nicholas Orsme uh, from, from 1320 to 1382. The monk John of Scarabosco, who lived from, from 1195 to 1256, a long time ago, mm -hmm. and who wrote Treatise on the Sphere, right. and, and many more. One of the best known proponents of a globe-shaped earth was the early English monk, theologian and historian, the Venerable Bede who lived from 673 to 735. He popularized the common BC AD dating system. Less well known was that he was also a leading astronomer of his time. Right, in, in his book on the reckoning of time, uh, among other things, he calculated the creation of the world to be in 3952 BC, and he showed how to calculate the date uh, for, for Easter, and uh, explicitly taught that the earth was round. From this, he showed why the length of days and nights changed with the seasons, how the tides were dragged by, by the moon. Uh, Beatty was also the, the first with, with his insight, um, with, with that insight about the moon and the tides, mm -hmm. and, and Galileo explained the tides wrongly centuries later. Right. Here's what Bede said about the shape of the earth. We call the earth a globe not as if the shape of a sphere were expressed in the diversity of plains and mountains, but because if all things are included in the outline, the Earth's circumference will represent the figure of a perfect globe. For truly, it is an orb placed in the center of the universe. In its width, it is like a circle. It is not, and, and not circular like a shield, but rather like a ball. And it extends from its center with perfect roundness on all sides. Now, that's pretty, pretty clear, clear <laughs> from way back in the eighth century. Now, he lived long ago and clearly taught that the earth was a sphere. The leading church theologian and philosopher of the Middle Ages, Thomas Aquinas, who lived from 1225 to 1274, he wrote in his greatest book, 
The physicist proves the Earth to be round by one means and the astronomer by another. For the latter proves this by means of mathematics, for example the shapes of eclipses or something of the sort, while the former proves it by means of physics, for example by the movement of heavenly bodies toward the center and so forth. Right. Also, look at these pictures. As early as the 5th century, medieval European kings carried a symbol called the Globus Cruciger, Latin for cross-bearing orb, as a Christian symbol of royal power. Mm -hmm. The orb, usually a golden sphere, represented the spherical earth. It was taught by a cross to symbolize Christ's lordship over the earth and held by the ruler to symbolize that he had been entrusted to rule his lands. I mean, that's more uh, good evidence that Christians long ago understood that the earth was round, not flat. Right. For more details on this topic, there are a number of great articles refuting the flat earth at creation.com. A good one to start with is the flat earth myth. It's at creation.com slash flat earth myth. Right. And when we come back, we'll talk about Columbus and what people thought about the earth when he set sail in 1492. In his second letter, the Apostle Peter links Jesus' second coming and judgment of the whole world to the historical reality of Noah's flood. He prophesied, In the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, Where is this coming he promised? But they deliberately forget that long ago by God's word the heavens existed, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also, the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. And Genesis is clear. The words all, every, everything and entire are used eight times in chapter 7 to describe what was covered or destroyed by the flood. Genesis 7.23 says every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. In the same way the flood was real and global, so too will the second coming of Jesus be real and the whole world be judged. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Now, if you just tuned in, this week we're talking about the flat earth myth and the Bible. There's ample historical evidence that Christians going way back to early medieval times understood that the earth was round. Right. Now, moving forward to the time of Columbus, who uh, lived from 1451 to 1506, we find that he was never opposed by flat earthers. This was simply because there, there were none to oppose him amongst <laughs> either the church or political leaders. So what exactly was the real issue? Well, the real issue was Columbus was trying to reach India by sea the long way around the earth. But to do that, his ships had to carry enough provisions for the, the, the entire length of the journey, obviously. He had learned from the 9th century Persian astronomer Alfreganus, he'd estimated each degree of latitude spanned 56 and two-thirds miles. Mm -hmm. But Columbus thought that the uh, that Alfreganus uh, meant the Roman mile, which is 1,480 meters. But he was using the Arabic mile, which is 1,830 meters. Oops. Thus, Columbus thought that the Earth's circumference was only about three quarters of its actual length of about 40,000 kilometers. Yeah, Columbus also greatly underestimated the distance between Japan and the Canary Islands as 3,000 Italian miles, about uh, 3,700 kilometers. Uh, but the actual distance by sea is more is, is over 19,000 kilometers, so he was way, way off there. Right, so it was the, the size of the Earth, not the shape that was under dispute. Right. His critics argued that the ships of his day in 1492 could not carry enough fresh water and food for such a huge journey. And they were right. Columbus was just lucky that uh, an enormous continent was in the way as he was going there. <laughs> Maybe people think the debate in his day was about the, the shape of the earth because that's what Bugs Bunny taught us. Pasta Fazul. She's around, she's a firm, she's a fully packed. She's around the back of my head. She's flat like your head. <laughs> she's flat like your head, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Columbus didn't know about the Viking discoveries centuries earlier, and he still thought he had landed in the East Indies. Uh, that, that was the name at the time for the Indian subcontinent. Right. The result of this mistake continues to the present day, and the common name for Native North Americans is Indians. Yeah. Uh, actually, the, the much parroted flat earth myth obviously doesn't come from Bugs Bunny or from history. So the question is, where did the myth that the church mm. taught that the earth was flat actually come from? It came from a book called The Life and Voyages of Christopher Columbus, published in 1828, authored by Washington Irving. Irving was probably America's first genuine best-selling writer. Uh, he admitted 
that he was, quote, apt to indulge the imagination. And flat earth belief was one of those, fr uh, those figments of his imagination. Yeah, you know, it was bad enough that this myth entered the public perception thanks to the popularity of Irving's book, but it became worse when it acquired a veneer of scholarship so it could be used as a club with which to bash Christianity. Right. The main propagandists for the cause uh, were the notorious 19th century anti-Christian bigots, John William Draper and Andrew Dixon White. Right, Draper was, was a fine chemist and photographer and the first president of the American Chemical Society, but he was a lousy historian. Uh, he wrote the book, History of the Conflict Between Religion and Science in 1874. It was a, a really poorly research, researched polemic against the church. Right. Uh, White was a disgruntled ex-Episcopalian uh, and the founder of Cornell University as the first explicitly secular university in the United States. Mm -hmm. He also published the two-volume work, History of the Warfare of Science with Theology in Christendom in 1896. Now, both authors relied heavily on the work of Cosmas the Monk, who lived in the 6th century. They, were, they, they, they portrayed his flat earth teaching as typical, rather than the almost <laughs> forgotten extreme minority view that it actually was. Actually, they're the ones most responsible for, for the discredited conflict thesis between Christianity and science. The reality is that the Christian worldview was responsible for science in the first place, while it was still born in other places like ancient Greece and, and in China. Right. Colin Russell uh, is Emeritus Professor of History of Science and or Technology at the Open University. And regarding these two hucksters, he writes, uh, Draper takes such liberty with history, perpetuating legends as fact that he is rightly avoided today in serious historical study. The same is nearly as true of White, though his prominent apparatus of prolific footnotes may create a misleading impression of meticulous scholarship. Yeah, both Jeffrey Russell and Stephen Jay Gould, who we mentioned earlier, argue that Draper and White had an agenda to discredit Christians who opposed the then-new theories mm. of Darwin by labeling them as flat earthers. Yeah. Well, not much has changed. <laughs> we'll be back shortly. Genesis Verse by Verse is a Bible study tool available on CMI's website, designed to help pastors, students, and laymen alike study the book of Genesis like never before and it's completely free. Simply look up any verse in Genesis 1 to 11 or just scroll down the page. The center column provides links to articles that answer common questions pertaining to that verse and the topics that naturally arise from them. Visit creation.com to use it today. On this week's episode, we're talking about how the myth that the church taught that the earth was flat originated. Uh, the, the church didn't teach that the earth was flat. It originated by people who wanted to discredit Christianity. Right. Okay. So even though, although hardly anyone in the church had ever taught that the earth was flat, do people outside the church believe the earth is flat? Natalie Wolchover, reporting in Live Science in June 2011, writes... Incredibly, some people still do. <laughs> yeah. In her report, she <laughs> said, The Flat Earth Society is an active organization currently led by a Virginian man named Daniel Shenton. Though Shenton believes in evolution and global warming, he and his hundreds, if not thousands of followers worldwide, also believe that the Earth is a disk that you can fall off of. So wow. the next time an evolutionist calls you a flat earther, point out that the leading flat earther is one of their fellow evolutionists. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there are other religions that have taught that the earth is flat. Hinduism, for example, taught that the world was flat and triangular and sits on the head of an elephant. Right, yeah. Uh, some people claim that uh, the terminology in the Bible supports a flat earth. There are terms like sunrise and sunset, or in Joshua's time when the sun stood still. Revelation 7 verse 1 refers to angels standing at the four corners of the earth. Okay, well, okay, right. the, the term sunrise and sunset are still used today. Yes. And, and everyone knows that when someone uses these terms, it doesn't uh, mean that they believe that the earth is flat and the sun moves in an arch throughout the sky. Yeah. Today we use the same language conventions that the Bible used here. It's the language of, of appearance or phenomenological language. Right. And from our perspective, Perspective on the surface of the earth, the sun certainly does appear to rise up from the horizon yeah. high into the sky and then it sets in the western sky. It's, it's the same thing at the time of Joshua. The miracle at his time that caused the sun to stop moving through the sky, again employing phenomenological language, the language of appearance, obviously the miracle was that God stopped the earth's motion and held everything in place. That's right. the miracle. 
when Revelation talks about the four corners of the earth, again, we still use that kind of terminology today sure. in the figurative sense. It's the commonly used um, way to refer to the cardinal directions, right? North, south, east, and west. Right. Yeah. On the other hand, the Bible does indicate that the earth is not flat. In Isaiah 40, 22, it tells us that God sits above the circle of the earth. And the Hebrew word used there is kug. Mm -hmm. It implies it implies ball shape. Right, That's not what the just word a means. flat circle. Yep. Uh, Job 26, 7 says that God hangs the earth on nothing. That adds more detail to the earth's condition. It doesn't sit on the back of some animal. It floats it in space. Floats in space, yeah. yeah. As, as many viewers know, the, the public current education system is certainly not friendly to teaching biblical truths, and there's plenty of misinformation taught to unsuspecting school children. You know, for example, that evolution is a fact, and that right. genetics, natural selection, speciation provides support for the idea that humans evolve from a single cell. That's an example of misinformation. Those fields of science actually all provide evidence against evolution and powerful support for creation. The genetic changes that scientists observe in living things aren't the right kind of changes. They'll, they'll never right. evolve a single cell to, you know, towards a human. Yeah. Another example of this misinformation in the education system comes from the 20th century high school history textbook, The American Pageant by Thomas Bailey. Many of its editions claimed that the superstitious sailors, uh, talking about Columbus's crew here, grew increasingly mutinous because they were fearful of sailing over the edge of the world. <laughs> but sailors were, were fully aware of the shape of the earth. One myth yes. states that people uh, first realized that the earth was round because they saw ships slowly sinking below the horizon. But before telescopes, it was more likely that the other way around, uh, sailors returning to land saw high mountains before the lowlands. Right, yeah, also well before Christ, sailors in the northern hemisphere, when they crossed the equator, they reported that in the south, the sun shone from the north. Mm. They also knew how to measure their latitude from the angle of the sun at noon, which only works if the earth is spherical. Right. So there are many evidences for a, a spherical earth right. that people knew about long ago. And of course, we're going to get into some of these when we get back in just a moment. Does the human Y chromosome suggest that men are headed for extinction? In 2003, an Oxford University geneticist claimed that the human Y chromosome was crumbling before our very eyes and that the demise of men was imminent. Since this time, other researchers have pointed out that these doomsday predictions were overstated. For instance, the Y chromosome has a unique mechanism for correcting harmful mutations. Nevertheless, the Y chromosome certainly shows signs of overall decay, as do the other chromosomes. Human genetic decay is a real phenomenon but it flies in the face of evolutionary ideas. According to evolutionists, all the complex coded information in our genomes supposedly arose through a slow accumulation of random changes called mutations. However, what we see with the Y chromosome is that such natural processes consistently degrade the genetic instructions as opposed to create them. Since the time of Adam, we live in a decaying world, just as the Bible says. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Our subject this week is the Flat Earth Myth and the Bible. So let's talk about some evidences for a round Earth. I can't believe we need to do this, but we need to do this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, the ancient Greeks before Christ had realized that the Earth is a globe by observing lunar eclipses. Yeah. They realized that during, during eclipses, the Earth was between the moon and the sun, and it always cast a circular shadow, regardless of the direction, which proves that uh, it's a globe. And as you can see in this picture here, these are time-lapse photos of the moon uh, during a lunar eclipse, or partial eclipse, as it moves through the Earth's shadow. And you can clearly see the circular shadow produced by the ball-shaped Earth. Right. The famous philosopher Aristotle, who lived from 384 to 322 BC, said, Either then the Earth is spherical, or it is, it is at least naturally spherical, and it is right to call anything that which nature intends it to be, and which belongs to it, rather than which it rather than which it is by constraint or contrary to nature. The evidence of the senses further corroborates this. How else would eclipses of the moon show segments shaped as we see them? As it is, the shapes which the moon itself each month shows are of every kind, straight, gibbous, and concave, but in eclipses the outline is always curved. And since it is the, it is the interposition of the earth that makes the eclipse, the form of this line will be caused by the form of the Earth's surface, which therefore is spherical. Aristotle. 
Okay, well, since there appear to be a, a rise in the number of people seriously asking if the Earth could be flat, let's look at yep. 10 evidences for a round Earth. Um, there are videos online that list some of these points, and there are other, um, other pro-flat uh, Earth videos that say they, they debunk these claims, and we'll deal with some of those claims uh, uh, as well a little later. Okay, number 10, we'll start with 10 and go back to one. Yeah. Number 10, the shadow of the Earth during lunar eclipses is curved. We, we just discussed that one. The shadow of the Earth is always curved, so it must be a sphere. Right, uh, number nine, all other planets, uh, moons and the sun are round. It seemed kind of odd that the Earth would be the only one that was a flat disk. Right, right. yeah. Number eight, day and night happen at different times. We have time zones. It's always day somewhere and night somewhere else. Right, uh, number seven, the uh, Coriolis effect. Since the Earth is a spinning sphere, freely moving objects on the surface of the Earth appear to be um, deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere and the left in the southern hemisphere. For example, hurricane winds in the northern hemisphere are deflected to the right, while uh, in the southern hemisphere they're deflected to the left. And even if the Earth was a, a spinning flat disk as opposed to just a stationary flat disk, you wouldn't see this effect, just like toilets going the other way in the when you right. go to Australia. Right. That's, there's another example, yeah. <laughs> Number six, you can make a triangle with three right angles. Right. Now, if you walk 10,000 kilometers on the Earth's surface and make a 90 degree turn, walk another 10,000 kilometers, turn 90 degrees again, and walk another 10,000 kilometers, you'll end up at the place you started, having made a triangle with three 90 degree angles. On a flat surface, as any geometry student knows, that's not possible. Right. Number five, the curvature of the Earth can be measured. Um, for example, pick two places uh, a few hundred miles directly north and south of each other, and at noon, measure the angle of the shadow made by a vertical meter stick at each location. You can use the shadow lengths to calculate the angle between the sticks, and the sticks will not be parallel. Right. And once you know how far apart they are, you can calculate the curvature of the Earth's surface. Right. Number four, the constellations and the moon appear upside down in the southern hemisphere. Now, from the southern hemisphere, any object or constellation that lies near the celestial equator, the imaginary line that divides the northern and southern halves of the sky, would appear both upside down and reversed left to right compared to the northern hemisphere. Right. Number three, the Earth can be circumnavigated. If you sail <laughs> yes. west long enough, you'll eventually return to where you began. Here's a picture showing a typical sailing route uh, beginning and ending in the UK by continually traveling west. This is possible because the Earth is a sphere. Yep. Number two, the horizon. Ships on the ocean or, or tall buildings viewed across a large lake disappear bottom first. Now here's a picture of Toronto buildings from the other side of Lake Ontario. Notice the bottoms of the buildings are missing. If the earth was flat, you should see the entire lengths of the buildings right to the ground. And of course, all, the, all of the shorter buildings that can't even be seen in this picture. Also, because the earth is round, you can watch the sunset twice. <laughs> Once if you're lying down, and then again if you stand up. Right. And number one, we've got photographic evidence. Um, yes. Astronauts who've traveled <laughs> to the moon uh, look back and see that the Earth is a sphere, and they've taken pictures of it. Right. Astronauts on the ISS, the International Space Station, orbit the Earth every hour and a half, every 92 minutes or so. They can see that the Earth is a sphere. That's right. That's probably the best proof for, for around Earth. Yeah. One yeah. of the lame attempts to uh, refute it claims that the curvature of the Earth is... Uh, in, in high altitude photos is the result of a wide angle lens. And wide angle lenses you know, do produce distortions, they, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but what about when a wide angle lens isn't used? Yes. <laughs> the curvature of the Earth can be seen. It's an observational scientific fact. Mm. That's the bottom line. And we'll be right back with just a few more details on this fascinating topic. Looking for a single resource that totally destroys evolution? You need Evolution's Achilles Heels. Authored by nine PhD scientists, the Evolution's Achilles Heels project involved examining areas evolutionists feel are their scientific strengths, such as natural selection, genetics and DNA, the fossil record, and radiometric dating. Discover how these areas and others are actually massive scientific weaknesses for evolution. Get Evolution's Achilles Heels, the Evolution Master Blaster. Order your copy at creation.com. All right, welcome back. We're just wrapping up this week's show on the topic, the flat earth myth and the Bible. Now, as we said, there are people attempting to refute the many proofs of a spherical earth for example, regarding the, the photographic proof, which is probably the best proof there is, they say that NASA is covering <laughs> up the truth 
about a flat earth and promoting a spherical earth via doctoring images and video to make the earth look spherical through, through CGI, computer generated imagery, that type of thing. Yeah, except um, CGI wasn't invented till just a little while ago. So what about all the other photos and things like wow. that? And, and I mean, just, the, the thing is, why? Why? Why would NASA do that? What's the benefit of, of tricking people into believing that the Earth's a sphere instead of being a flat circular disk. What's the payoff? What's the reason you would go through that much trouble and, and, and have these secret hidden cult shadow yeah. people that, that just, no, 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 let them think the Earth's a sphere. Why? What are, what, <laughs> what's, yeah. the, what's the goal of that? As we're recording this today, Jeff Williams, an astronaut, is aboard the ISS for a six month mission. Scott Kelly holds the current American record for cumulative days in orbit, 534 days, amazing. Jeff Williams will tie that record on September 6, 2016. Jeff Williams is a Christian. Yeah. I heard him speak at a, at a conference at a church in California a few years ago. So he would need to be in, as a Christian, he would need to be in on this NASA conspiracy too. He's got a camera, you can, you can, he's taking pictures and you can see them on Facebook, right. on, on the NASA site of the cameras that he took like an hour, the, the pictures that he took like an hour ago. So he's... He's in on it too. And so were yeah. the Greeks and all that stuff. Uh, anyway, so let's summarize here. I mean, almost all the Earth, uh, early and, and medieval church scholars who commented on the Earth's shape explicitly said that it was round. Okay, medieval European rulers used a golden sphere or orb called the Globus Cruciger to represent the Earth under Christ's rule, again, again emphasizing that they understood that the Earth, the Earth was a sphere. Right. Columbus's opponents never disputed the shape of the Earth, but only its size. And they were right. The Earth is much bigger than what Columbus thought. Yeah. The Flat Earth myth began with a fictional account of Columbus in the 19th century by Washington Irving. Uh, then it was aggressively pushed in what ended up being in, an influential anti-Christian polemics by Draper and White. And, of course, there are many evidences for a spherical Earth. And the final irony is, the leading flat earther today is an evolutionist. <laughs> so there you have it. There um, you go. It, it's, it's unfortunate that many uh, people who, who label themselves as creationists are, are, are being drawn in to this notion that there's this big conspiracy covering up a, a, a flat earth and, and right. saying that it's spherical. And I think that um, comes from the fact that people think that there's this massive conspiracy amongst evolutionists you know, to, to, to try to trick to yeah, the truth, the truth of crea about creation. These people actually believe that we evolved, folks. They believe that's a scientific yes, uh, it's process. It's not a and conspiracy that, theory among scientists. They actually believe we evolved from apes. It's right. not a conspiracy. Right. So then you, they, they take that idea that, well, that's a conspiracy, and so maybe the Earth's flat, and maybe the Bible teaches it. And, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Next week on Creation Magazine Live, evidence, fossils, evidence that something happened quickly. That's next week. See you later.